Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, June 30th, around 9 a.m. Mountain Time 2022. The models are in. We're looking at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. There has been an uptick in moderate tremor in the Pacific Northwest, as well as an uptick in the East Coast. Another earthquake striking South Carolina. But the big story, global crop problems point to years of high food prices. Get growing, folks, and keep calm. It's boom time. Now, the first big story is high food prices. And global crop problems are pointing to years of these high prices. In fact, the world has perhaps never seen this level of simultaneous agricultural disruption. According to agricultural executives, industry analysts, farmers, and economists interviewed by Reuters, meaning it may take years to return to global food security. And the best thing you can do is start growing your own food. That's all I'll say on that topic. Tornadoes war tornado worn storms pummel Alberta with heavy hail. They covered the highway. Pretty normal for the prairies this type time of year. But we're using this as context to talk about a historical storm that may just blow your mind. And it wouldn't be summer without storms in the prairies, now would it? And folks looking across Alberta just the day or so ago saw some beefy storms as an active system rolled through the region. Pretty beautiful clouds, but the hail covering the Trans-Canada Highway was the big story. And clearly, uh, that is also probably not good for crops in that region, just in my humble opinion. Now, local weather history, this is interesting. The record-breaking June 30th, 1877, Lafayette hailstorm. Have you ever heard of it? Well, you have now. The worst hailstorm on record for the Lafayette area with unofficial state record-breaking hailstone diameter occurred June 30th of 1877. The largest hailstones and the most destructive hailstorm on record for the Lafayette area. This is up in the uh, Indiana area, Pennsylvania, so we're going to get to the maps in just a moment here. Now, local press reported extraordinary hailstorm lasting just five minutes, which pounded the far east of present-day West Lafayette to Lafayette. Stones of ping-pong to greater than softball size occurred, though the average size of the stones was between a hen and a goose's egg or two to three inches in diameter. Damage was so immense to trees, crops, gardens, and structures. Some of the stones reportedly weighed one pound. One of the stones picked up, examined by residents, and measured. The following measurements were made. So massive hailstones happening here in 1877 during the last grand minima, the Dalton minima. <laughs> Could you imagine that? And there, these are the regions on that day that got affected by hail of over one inch in green. And we're talking all the way from Nebraska over here um, to Massachusetts. This is Connecticut. Wow. Vermont saw tornadoes, New Hampshire tornadoes, tornadoes near Philadelphia and southeastern PA, tornadoes throughout Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, a couple tornadoes in Kentucky as well. So it was quite a destructive event. Here is the actual map from that event where we can see the two, the cold systems mixing and then that frontal boundary forming. More maps. And just quite an fantastic event. It was so spectacular and so great was the destruction in the outbreak with multiple strong violent tornadoes that Harper's Weekly did a feature of the damage. Specifically from south southwest of Vincennes, Indiana on the Wabash River, there was a deadly EF4 tornado that left much of Mount Carmel, Illinois in ruins, as you can see here from the drawings. Absolute devastation. And following this, a significant progressive derecho would strike the Midwest on August 31st with more widespread wind damage. So we're not out of the woods yet. We haven't seen a storm that we have seen in historical times yet. And when that storm comes, it will be, well, can you imagine what the mainstream media is going to blame it on? I can. Heavy rainfall for portions of coastal Texas 
Fire weather concerns for Alaska. A tropical disturbance off the coast of Texas, and we'll cover that in greater detail in just a second here, will bring the threat for some heavy rainfall through Friday. Meanwhile, monsoonal moisture flows into the southwest and southern Rockies where flash flood threats will increase. Severe thunderstorms are expected across the upper Midwest with and western Great Lakes today. Dry and warm conditions for interior Alaska as fire weather concerns continue. Here you see the flash flood warnings for most of southeastern Utah, a few counties up here in um, the northern mountains in western Colorado. So heads up in those regions. Now you might also take a look at some of these darker regions here, the gray. What does that mean? It means poor air quality. Now why would there be poor air quality in the east? Well, because of fires in the west. And here you can see the U.S. smoke map bringing one plume of smoke over to that into the upper Midwest here and a second finger that goes right up the Appalachian spine. So if you're in these regions, good news, there's rain coming for the entire east. It's going to push down some of this soot and smoke in the air and will clear up your skies and hopefully clear up your air. Now let's take a look at that GFS model to show you that rain. And you can see it's a pretty rainy system over the next three days in the east. And then that heavy monsoonal moisture here in the Four Corners region is exploding every day with that thermal convectivity. No severe weather threat until maybe early next week, right in there. So we'll keep a close eye on that for you. As we move and look at the Atlantic tropical cyclones and disturbances, there's one, two, three of them in a row. And we've been covering both of these two. Now we're going to look at the models for all three. So we'll start with the Texas. The Texas uh, tropical disturbance has been moving slowly east, but it is forecast to make a beeline to the north at any moment. So all the models are showing going straight up towards Oklahoma except for one. So it should then continue to bring that heavy rain to this region for several days. So heads up there. And tropical disturbance number two here is going to be listed as a tropical storm in just moments and then a hurricane before it hits Nicaragua in about two days. So, And then that other disturbance to the east of that Looks like it's going to be lining up and rafing the northern portion of South America along the same track as the prior. So no threats to the U.S., good news. Let's take a look at the annual heat wave index for the U.S. over the last 130 years. It's uh, pretty spectacular. And what you're going to glean from this is that since 1895, we have had uh, been calculating the temperature in North America for quite some time here. And the annual heat wave index for the U.S. shows uh, quite a few things. It shows that the hottest time in the U.S. was about 100 years ago. And today, is there is no comparison to the past. In fact, there is almost no change at all in the entirety of the record. But if we want to talk about hot times, we're talking 1930 to 1938. And if we were alive back then, we know what we're talking about. The annual heat wave index of the United States is beyond reproach. It is, you can't even argue it. The index defines a heat wave as a period lasting four days with an average temperature that would only be expected to occur once every 10 years. And this is based on the historical record. The index value for a given year depends on how often heat waves occur and how widespread they are. And as you can see, we did have a spike back in 2011, but nothing like the spikes back in 1936, 1934, and 1931. And those are the facts. Now let's take a look at the Pacific North Seismic Network recent events, and you can see quite a bit going along, going on here at the uh, volcanoes here. Here we see the clustering around Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, a little clustering out there in the, the bays just west of Seattle. Now, a few people have told me that they have seen some strange things happening at Shasta, so we've been keeping a close eye on that. There is um, no activity showing anything unusual near Mount Shasta, so... That's the good news.
but we do have a moderate uptick in the volcanoes in the Pacific Northwest, including Mount St. Helens, where two weeks ago they were showing 25 earthquakes over 30 days. We're now at 30 earthquakes in the last 30 days at St. Helens. So there's a significant uptick in the last 15 days there. There's been a slight uptick in Rainier with now 13 earthquakes recorded in the last 30 days. This is up from about um, 11 two weeks ago. So we're keeping a close eye on St. Helens and Rainier because it seems the activity is slowly rising. Now, why? Because eruptions in the Cascades happen often and regularly cyclically. And during the past 4,000 years, we've had hundreds of eruptions in that area. And just 200 years ago, we had at least one, two, three, four, five, seven volcanoes erupting at that time. So it is more common to have volcanoes erupting in the Cascades than not, and currently nothing is erupting. Now, 3.5 magnitude earthquake struck South Carolina for the second time in a week. On Sunday, a 3.4 magnitude struck the same area, and then this is followed a few days later by a 3.5. What is going on in Elgin? Well, it's anyone's guess because there are lots of earthquakes happening in this region. Here is the seismic map for the uh, entire world, and there's nothing significant happening Moderate activity worldwide, quite normal, 5.1 blood echo here. Could be case concern, but the Elgin quake. Now here we are at recent earthquakes near Elgin, South Carolina, thanks to EarthquakeTrack.com. And what we can see here is there's been multiple earthquakes and aftershocks because of the 3.5 magnitude and the 3.4 four days ago. So dozens of earthquakes happening in Elgin. And there are some oil and gas interests south of... Uh, Camden here. So here's Camden. There is some oil and gas problems up here, but there is no fracking. There's no deep well injection that I know of. So something is afoot in this region, probably some fault activity, some coastal plain activity. Uh, there is very little uh, geology I could find about it, but we're going to keep a close eye on Elgin because there is an uptick in East Coast tremors, as well as the whole country in Iceland. Uptick and tremor. Take a look at this. We have the Nor the Tjernus fracture zone popping off. We have um, Ostia still continuing to rumble. We have Bartabunga popping off and the entire Reykjanes Peninsula, as well as a new volcano that hasn't erupted in a thousand years, getting quite active. Now, the most active region is the Reykjanes Peninsula currently in the last 24 hours. We'll come take a look at that. You can see a small cluster in the last 12 hours of micro seismic tremor. So more magma moving in to Iceland. And we're just waiting for the boom. So stay tuned. Space weather news update. All is quiet on the sun as we won't have a major uptick until mid-July. Mid-July, the third week of July will be the big boom. So stay tuned. Now, a rocket crashed into the moon a few days ago, and no one knows where it came from. I was waiting for some news to come from this, but nothing has happened. Now, this is a fantastic <coughs> story, and there's even video footage. I just didn't pull it up here. We can't do everything now, can we? A rocket reportedly crashed into the moon back in March, and the weird thing is no one has any idea where it came from. Isn't that strange? But we do have video footage that it did hit the moon. So apparently there's a country that's embarrassed that it tried to make it to the moon and it didn't. Now scientists uncover traces of fire use by humans 800,000 years old. It's, did you hear that? Scientists from Wiesman, Weizmann Institute of Science have been able to detect non-visual traces of fire dating back at least 800,000 years. One of the earliest examples for the controlled use of fires. So, pushing the time back. Early human fossils found in a cave are also a million years older than expected. Wow, everything's getting pushed back here. Take a look at that. Four different Australopithecan crania were found in the Sturkfontein Caves, South Africa. The Sturkfontein Cave... Phil contains this and other Australopithecus fossils dated to 3.4 to 3.6 million years ago. Wow. We've been around for quite some time. Eerie figures with giant heads found painted on a rock shelter in Tanzania. In 2018, archaeologists made a staggering discovery in Swaga Swaga Game Reserve in central Tanzania. 52 previously undocumented rock shelters were discovered. And some of the paintings are completely bizarre, like these giant headed dudes. Might do a more detailed analysis over at Magnetic Reversal News. 
but you can see there's not a lot of high resolution pictures of the area. That is one of the panels there. Those are the big headed dudes. And just fascinating that our ancestors were putting all this information on rock for good reason. This is obviously a giraffe. So stay tuned for more updates on the rock shelter art. Hello. Now, a little known civilization in the Americas built pyramids as old as ancient Egypt. And you're looking at one of them. And more importantly, some of the other structures that these people built look remarkably like Chacoan masonry. Now, considered the cradle of civilization in the Americas, the sacred city of Corral Supe is a 5,000-year-old archaeological site situated on a dry desert terrace overlooking the green valley of the Supe River in Peru. The sacred city of Caral Supe is a complex of pyramids and sunken circular courts only just discovered in 1948. What do we really know about our past? Nothing. These cities were just discovered in 1948. Isn't that mind-blowing? And the setup of this looks remarkably like the Pueblo people. This looks like any Kiva, the Great Kiva, in any of the large cities out here in the Southwest. And more importantly, the masonry has chink work between the larger blocks. This is indicative of Chacoan-style masonry. Are these the Chacoan people? I think so. More on magnetic reversal news in the future. Now the deepest image of our universe ever taken by the Webb Telescope will be revealed in July. And it will show the same stuff that we can see only further away. All links below. Foods to naturally increase your skin's UV resistance. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, as the magnetosphere wanes, UVA, UVB, and potentially UVC may be raining down on Earth in numbers unseen. And we already have upticks in UVA and B. So, it's a no-brainer to eat foods that would naturally increase your skin's UV resistance. Now, what are these foods? They're antioxidant rich and they're good for you. So it's a no brainer. Tomatoes, watermelons, and red peppers derive their rich colors from carotenoids, beta carotene, lutein, and lycopene. These are all antioxidants. And a German study participants who ate a quarter cup of tomato paste with olive oil every day for 10 weeks experienced 35% less skin reddening when exposed to UV radiation. So why wouldn't you eat those tomatoes? Now, cruciferous veggies. If you plan to naturally increase your skin's natural resistance to the sun, you'll definitely want to include more cruciferous vegetables. These flu foods inc include, but are not limited to, broccoli, kale, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, cabbage, cauliflower. And they are known, well, for protecting the skin, UV-resisting and disease-fighting properties. Dark leafy greens as well. Carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, and cantaloupe. Orange foods with beta carotene provide increased protection against sunburn, especially when combined with vitamin E. And almonds and almond butter, as well as pomegranate, all good foods. And we'll leave you links below here so you can do your own research. Don't take our word for it. Do your own homework. I mean, we did. And I have a new idea. I didn't like that flat earth so much when I looked into it, but the croissant earth, well, that sounds delicious. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when there are actual people that think this might be true. And I'm one of them. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. We love you. Thanks to our one-time donors, our Patreons, the heroes that share this video. We cannot do this without your help. And thank you. That's a boom. Mm.